Okay, at this point, we know our way around the user interface, understand the toolbar, menus, some of these panels, even though we don't know what they do. And we can also work with a document, zoom in, zoom out, pan around, that kind of thing. So let's, let's start looking at some of the other tools that'll enable you to make changes on your document. So first one I wanna to touch on is the brush. Now, there are a lot of people who literally just use Photoshop for painting art. So if you've got a graphics tablet like I have, uh, there's folks who are artists who will pretty much only work with the brush tool. I don't use it a lot, to do painting, but it is useful in some instances where there's certain effects where it's useful to sort of paint in where they are applying and where they don't apply. But just to demo it, we're gonna just look at the brush tool and how it works. So it makes sense later when we use this to make some other adjustments. So I've clicked the brush tool there. You can see if you hover over any of the tools here, Photoshop actually tells you what they are if you hold long enough, it kind of gives you a little animation of what they do. And then what's most important is it's also telling you the keyboard shortcut to bring these up at any point. So the keyboard shortcut for brush is B. So if you were doing something and you suddenly decided, oh, I want the brush tool, you just hit B on your keyboard and you can see the brush tool selected here. Now, when I go over the document, uh, you can see it's got this sort of cross or uh, cancel icon, stop icon. So I can't actually paint. Reason I can't do that is because I'm not on a visible layer. So jumping back over to our layers panel, which we're gonna talk about uh, in more detail in a couple of videos, I'm still on that green gradient effect layer, which I've turned off. So what Photoshop is saying is you can't paint on this because this is actually the properties for the effect. I know that won't make too much sense at the moment, but suffice to say, what we need is a new layer, or we need to switch to a layer that you can actually paint on. So I could go back to the original photo, and now you can see the cursor for the brush icon is kind of activated, and I can start painting. I'm gonna undo that. What I wanna do is create a new layer, which we've done before. There's that icon down there and we've got this to start painting on. So I'm gonna switch over to my graphics tablet for this. You can do this with a mouse, but obviously you get way more precision with one of these. Now, as you saw, it's simply a case of draw around and you get a paint effect. But let's talk about, I guess, the qualities, if you like, of some of what's going on with a brush tool here. Obviously, we've got a green, medium sized soft brush. So how do we change some of those things? So the first thing is the color. So down here at the bottom of the toolbar, you can see there are two colors Photoshop kind of gives you to work with what they call a foreground and a background color. So that whenever you're working on something, you've kind of got two colors you can just quickly grab without having to keep going back and change these to different colors, which you will want to do. If you want to change colors, with the foreground color here, if I just tap that, click it, it brings up the color picker. So now what I can do is change this to anything I like. So you've got two parts here. If you ignore all the numbers, we're just gonna concentrate on the square here and this kind of slider here. So the slider is the actual hue. So that's the actual color in terms of if you think about color, the hue of the color that you're gonna be painting with. Once you move that to something you want. So say we wanna paint with a red, then what the box gives you in terms of control is saturation and brightness. So the X axis this way is saturation. So if I'm all the way over here, I'm desaturated. If, the, if I drag over towards this side, then I've got kind of a fully saturated red. Likewise, the Y axis is the lightness. So if I'm down the bottom, then it's completely dark. Up the top is completely bright in terms of red. So a desaturated, completely bright red is actually white. It's a little bit hard to understand in terms of why it renders like this on the box, but suffice to say, if you pick red, you've just got to drag around until this little swatch here 
becomes what you want to paint with. So that looks good to me. I'm going to click OK. I'm not going to worry about any of these numbers at the moment or any of these other options. And you can see the swatch down here has updated. And now when I paint, I've got that red color. Obviously, what this means is I can go back, move it around. OK, out of that, I've got a different color. I can keep doing that all day long and work with different colors in there. Uh, so what about the qualities of the brush? You can change that kind of thing using the menu up the top. So there's a whole bunch of options up here. We'll go through a few of them, the ones I used uh, the most and what they do. For the most part, you can alter the brush with this sort of first option here. Normally what you'll see is an icon that's the type of brush and the size of the brush. So if I click on that, then it brings up this menu, which has got a few different options for changing the brush. So I can actually increase the size of the brush in here. So I could drag this up and I'm gonna get a bigger brush. So you can see the cursor has changed. It's now a much, much bigger circle. If I make it quite small, then you can see cursor goes really, really small. So that's giving you an idea of how big a brush you're gonna be painting with. And then the second thing is the hardness. So we've got a really soft brush here, it's at zero. If we drag that up quite high and now start painting, you can see it's a much, much harder edge compared to what we were painting with earlier. If I go back, drag that all the way up to 100, then I'm gonna get a really, really harsh sort of straight edge from doing this painting. These are the options you've got for changing paint. You've got the colors, which you can affect down here. You've got the softness and you've got the size. All of those you can do with keyboard shortcuts. Um, colors are a little bit trickier. It's pretty much easier to just work with these swatches to change the color. But certainly the size of the brush, you got the left and right square brackets on your keyboard. If you hit those, you can see I'm doing that now. It's gonna make the brush bigger or smaller. So that's really, really useful to learn and remember if you need to change the size of the brush you're working with. Other thing you can do when you've got the brush active like this and it's the active tool you're working with if you right click with your mouse oh i need to uh take the graphics tablet off it actually brings up this little menu which is exactly the same as the one up the top there so you can change some of those settings directly from where you're painting uh, on your document which is much much easier way to do it than sort of keep taking your mouse up to the menu bar there other thing you'll see in this menu is there's actually a number of preset brushes. So these are brushes sort of Photoshop assumes people will may want to work with. So different sort of variations of hardness, softness. There's some things that will affect how the brush behaves with like pressure sensitive pens like this one for my graphics tablet. Don't need to worry about that too much. But then the other thing you've got are different types of brushes. So this is where you can get into things like watercolors, stencils, different types of paint brushes. So if I select one of these, this being a hard pencil, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. You can see when I draw with this one, I get a different effect that is more like a pencil. This opens up a whole bunch of new properties like these two panels over here. So there's a panel for brush settings and a panel that has those same preset brushes as well that you can access over here. So what you're starting to notice with Photoshop is you can actually set up the same things in many different places. It's like they're trying to cater to a lot of different types of people's workflow who have got used to doing it a certain way or just like certain options to always be on screen or always available in a right click etc etc that can get confusing but it's just a case of having to go through training like this to sort of discover where these things are what options are available we won't go into the brush settings because there's loads and loads of things you can change. It's advanced stuff. We don't need to worry about it now. For the most part, for simple changes you pretty much just want to work with a round brush, be able to change hardness, softness, like we did with that right click there, size and hardness, that's pretty much all you need. Once you've got that and the color there, you're good to go. There's a couple of other options up here that we might touch on later, blending modes, opacity, flow, but this is enough for the time being. So that covers the brush. In the next video, we're going to look at the type tool. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help 
with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.